People with superpowers became an important part of the working world in the 20th century. The government invited people with special abilities to enlist their powers and help build Lincoln City. However, the demand for motorized labor has declined since the second industrial revolution as companies choose to use automated systems. Due to the lack of opportunity among powerful citizens, crime syndicates began to exploit them in a variety of ways. A criminal organization called The Trust has been extracting the spinal fluid of powered humans to create a highly addictive drug called Psych. As the problems continue to arise from the drug, people have begun calling for new laws to restrict the use of superpowers. The police force has started using drones and robots called guardians to monitor and apprehend powered humans who work without a permit. A class 5 electric named Connor Reed tries to earn a living by working as a temporary laborer at construction sites while applying for a more permanent job. After a job interview, he heads straight to a construction site to determine if the foreman could use another electric. The foreman agrees to let him work for half a day, but the police soon arrive to inspect the place and ensure that no forces are used. They order the workers to look at the sky so the drone can determine if they have power. During the investigation, the authorities learn that there is an arrest warrant for against one of the workers. While the police are arresting the worker, he starts the fire and tries to escape. The guards soon jump off the drone and shoot at it until it dies. Elsewhere in Lincoln City, police conduct a drug raid on the home of a man who appears to be under stress. The guard breaks down the door, but the robot is fourth-class muscle, throws a disc at him, hitting him in the neck. The suspect tries to escape through the window, but Officer Park enters the room and threatens to shoot him. While searching the place, the officer discovers a room full of people with superpowers from whom cerebrospinal fluid is being removed. Police from also found several psych packs in the apartment linked to a crime boss named Marcus Sutcliffe. Connor is visiting his mother at the supermarket when her boss, Dave, scolds her for accidentally freezing the sauce and dropping it on the floor. Mary Reed, a cryokineticist, has difficulty controlling her abilities due to a brain tumor. Connor becomes angry at Dave talking to his mother, confronting him, and almost using his powers. However, the boss doesn't give up and asks the two of them to leave the store. Connor convinces his mother to start chemotherapy on the way home, but Mary tells him they can't afford it. The next day, as Connor waits on a street corner for a part-time job, he spots a Lincoln power truck. His friend Travis warns him not to mess with them as they are part of Sutcliffe's team. A van approaches them and the driver says he is looking for an electric vehicle, but only class 2 or higher. Connor hesitates, but eventually goes to the car and tells the driver that he wants a $200 deposit. Driver Garrett agrees and asks him to get in the van. In the van, a mute brown named Freddy uses sign language to order him to put on a safety vest. Garrett takes Connor to a chemical plant to deactivate the electric fence. Connor tries to cut the wires with bolt cutters, but was surprised by S electric shock and decided to overload it. An arsonist named Maddie melts the lock and allows a transporter to enter the factory. As they load barrels of chemicals into their truck, a security guard appears and attempts to call for backup. Garrett uses his telekinetic powers to steal the radio, so the guard relents and tells them that he didn't TC anything. As they leave the scene, the police are alerted to a break-in at Jones Chemical. Patrol officers are instructed to keep an eye on the red van. Connor tells Garrett to pay him and let him go, but Garrett says the job isn't done yet. Garrett parks the car under the bridge and asks his team to remove the logo and the red sheet covering the car's actual white paint job. The drone spots its transporter, but the police find that the color does not match the description and continue their search elsewhere. Garrett drives the van into the garage and asks a man named Reno to take them to Sutcliffe, who can read minds. Rhino leads them to a secret passage to the Satchelf Club. At the club, Wesley Cumbo, a representative of the Trust, interrogates Sutcliffe for failing to meet his payment obligations. When Sutcliffe tries to explain the reason for not paying, Cumbo tells Sutcliffe to read the mind of his associate, Copperhead. He tells Cumbo that Copperhead is thinking of different ways to slit his throat. Cumbo tells him that he has one week to pay what he owes to the trust. After Cumbo leaves the club, Garrett introduces Connor to Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe reads Connor's mind and concludes that he will be helpful to his crew. Sutcliffe asks a woman named Nia to show Connor around. Nia offers him a drink, but Connor says he is just stopping by. Sutcliffe tells Garrett that he can't pay for the chemicals right now because he needs to pay Cambo before he unleashes his minions on them. Sutcliffe asks Garrett about Connor's abilities and wonders if he could use electric for another task. Garrett tells him that Connor is strong but still needs training. 
Sutcliffe tells Garrett to quickly prepare Connor for his new job because they would make a lot of money with it. Garrett takes Connor with him and gives him another $300 bonus. He tells him to wait at the same place again the next day to earn more money. Before he runs away, Garrett advises him not to waste his talent. At home, Mary tells Connor that he returned to the grocery store to give her her job back. Connor tells her that her boss is an idiot, but she says they have no choice because they need the money. Back at the club, Naya approaches Sutcliffe and tells him that she no longer has psych. Sutcliffe shows her a bottle of medicine, but she has to do something for it before can get it. Officers Park and Davis are outside investigating a robbery at Jones Chemicals. Park concludes that the suspects took 200 gallons of chemicals to use hydro to spill water into Sutcliffe's site. Davis tells Park that the electrician hotwired the fence and the arsonist broke the lock. Park asks Davis to create a list of electricians who have this type of power. The next day, Travis advises Connor to be careful when working with Sutcliffe's men. Soon the foreman comes from his last job looking for two electricians, but Connor sees Garrett's car and decides to go with Garrett instead. Garrett still doubts Connor's motivation, so he asks him why he chose to work with them instead of finding a legitimate job. Connor says he needs money to pay for his mother's treatment. Garrett decides to test his skills by asking him to turn off the car alarm outside the restaurant. When the alarm sounds, Connor asks Garrett how much he will get if he joins them on their next heist. He turns off the alarm after Garrett tells him he will get $25,000. Garrett learns that Connor's father, an electrician like him, was shot during a liquor store robbery. He comes to the conclusion that his mother raised him without skills so that he wouldn't be like his father. Garrett soon begins training Connor by asking him to light a light bulb, but he breaks it on the first try. As they prepare for the robbery, Connor does other menial work for Garrett, including collecting payments from drug dealers. Soon Connor will be able to keep a light bulb burning without it exploding. Garrett tests Connor's strength again by pitting him against another electrician who refuses to pay him. A man gives Connor electric shocks, but they don't have much effect on him. Connor knocks the man down with a stronger punch to the chest. Garrett trains him in the use of his powers and advises him to be more ruthless when dealing with other people in his circle. One night, Connor decides to visit Dave at the supermarket and threatens him. At home, Connor tells his mother that he was hired for a permanent position. In front of the house, Park and Davis are watching Connor. From his records, they learn that he doesn't have a regular job and is having trouble paying his mother's medical bills. Park is asking Davis to be placed on the person of interest list. The next day, Connor and Garrett visit the bank to observe their daily routine and find out the location of the surveillance cameras and the safe. Connor tells them that there is no way to open the vault without setting off the alarm. Garrett says the drone's best time is seven minutes, so they should be out in five minutes. At the supermarket, Mary is confused by Dave's behavior because he is much nicer to her and even tries hard not to let her do the job. That night, an armed gang breaks into the bank. Connor goes straight to the vault to short out the power and stop the bank from blocking it remotely. When the alarm sounds, the employee is asked to open the safe manually. Garrett threatens her as she enters the combination, but Connor tries to calm her down by telling her to relax and take deep breaths. When the safe is opened, Garrett is furious to learn that most of S money is missing. The employee tells them that the bank had already emptied the safe earlier that day. The gang decides to leave the bank with the rest. When they go outside, drones are already waiting for them. Connor shoots the drones with a wave and causes the spaceship loaded with the Guardian to fall to the ground. They return to Sutcliffe S Club and tell him that they only took $50,000. While Garrett and Sutcliffe argue about paying back the trust, Copperhead approaches them and shoots Sutcliffe. Rhino blocks the projectiles with his bulletproof body, so Copperhead decides to point his pistol at Nia. Connor knocks the gun out of her hand and Copperhead attacks him with a knife. Rhino knocks her out and walks up to shoot her three more times, to make sure she is dead. Later, Connor walks in on Nia while she is being drugged with Psyche. Connor wonders why Cambo's killer was after her, but she tells him it wasn't the first time someone pointed a gun at her. Naya notices a wound on Connor's arm and takes care of it. Naya reveals that the killer tried to kill her because of her powers. When Connor asks why Naya continues to treat Sutcliffe, she replies that she owes him. When Connor returns home, Mary tells him about the money he kept in his drawer. He tells her he got it for overtime. But Mary says she called the office where Connor applied for the job, but they never heard from him. While he is explaining why he committed a crime to make money, his mother suddenly loses control of her powers and falls to the ground. 
At the hospital, the doctor tells Connor that a tumor is pressing her brain against her skull and she needs immediate surgery to prevent the situation from getting worse. He inquires about the cost of the operation and realizes that he cannot afford it. Outside the hospital, Park and Davis wait for Connor to invite him to the police station. Park asks him about the chemical plant and the bank robbery, but Connor says he doesn't know anything. They warn Connor that he is working for Lincoln City's worst criminal and forward to Sutcliffe. Park brags that they will burn down Sutcliffe's $4 million PSYK next week. He assumes that they will soon catch the crime boss. Puck mentions Connor's sick mother and offers to help if he gives them information about Sutcliffe. Davis interrupts and starts making fun of Connor by insulting his father. Connor gets angry and asks them to double-check the security footage because they have the wrong person. Puck asks Davis to let Connor go, arguing that they don't have enough evidence to arrest him. Davis recommends planting evidence with Connor and reminds him that people with power can be dangerous. Park leaves, shocked by Davis' suggestion. As Garrett leaves the train station, he meets Connor on the street. Connor swears he didn't tell the police and asks Garrett to take him to Sutcliffe because he has an idea for a job. When they arrive at the garage, Sutcliffe reads Connor's mind and learns that he hasn't revealed anything. Hearing Connor's idea, Garrett suggests intercepting the police while they bring the $10 million psych to the scene of the fire. Connor makes a deal with Sutcliffe, telling him to hand over Nia if he receives psych. Sutcliffe suspects that Connor will use Nia to heal his dying mother. Nia is upset and leaves the room. Garrett makes his own deal and asks Sutcliffe to consider him a partner and not part of his team. Sutcliffe agrees and says Garrett deserves it. As they plan the heist, Connor insists that no police personnel be killed. Connor approaches Nia and promises to let her go once she heals his mother. Nia snaps at him and says that he only cares about her because she is a healer. On the day of the robbery, the gang prepares roadblocks and looks for the armored transporter. The drones follow the transporter but have to retreat as soon as they reach the no-fly zone. As the driver approaches the location, he sees a checkpoint and takes a detour. Maddie and Freddy follow the van in their car and Garrett blocks it with a garbage truck. When the driver yells at him to move his car, Garrett tries to stall the car so that Connor can gather his strength and blow up the van. Shortly after Garrett leaves the truck, Connor finally attacks the van with a powerful shot, knocking the guards unconscious. Garrett uses his telekinetic powers to incapacitate the Guardians incapacitated. Connor short-circuits the Guardians near Garrett while Freddy and Maddie disable the remaining robots. Maddie burns a hole in the armored van large enough for Freddy to throw tear gas into. The police officers soon get out of the car and gasp. Since the delivery truck receives no response, the drone decides to enter the no-fly zone. Maddie takes the psych boxes from the guards and gives them to Rhino. The guards beg to let them go, but Rhino's men start shooting at them. Rhino shoots Maddie in the back as she turns to see what happened to the police officers. Garrett uses telekinesis to push Freddy out of the way to protect him while Rhino and his men shoot them. Rhino takes off, leaving two of his men behind to deal with Garrett and his crew. More guards arrive on the scene, allowing Garrett, Freddy, and Connor to escape while Rhino's henchmen are distracted. One of the thugs shoots Garrett while the other fights with the guards. Undaunted, the robots kill two thugs and Garrett and his team flee to safety. As they run away, Freddy realizes he's been hit by a bullet, so Garrett carries him to Rhino comes to Sutcliffe's bar and shows him psych. Naya asks Sutcliffe where the others are, but he ignores her question and gives her a vial of psych. Sutcliffe hints that he can't let Nia go because her father still owes him a lot of money. When Connor learns that Freddy has died, he blames Garrett for the disastrous outcome of the robbery. He claims Sutcliffe betrayed them because of Garrett's demands. At the police station, Davis tells the police chief that Connor is one of Esmain's suspects in the robbery. However, Puck insists that Connor is just a pawn because he's not the type to kill cops. Connor visits his mother in the hospital and promises her that he will find a way to cure her. However, Mary asks him to stop what he is doing and just let her go. Meanwhile, Puck visits his ex-wife's house to spend time with his daughter Lena. She tells him that the other children are afraid of her because she uses her powers to move things. As Lena walks through the park, she expresses her fears that her parents would betray her because she heard on the news that this is exactly what happens to children like her. As Puck tries to comfort her, Travis approaches him to give him a message from Connor. Puck meets with Connor at the diner to find out what he wants, but he insists it's too late to make the deal. Connor assures him that he will turn himself into the authorities, but he wants to help them catch Sutcliffe first. At the police station, police prepare to arrest Sutcliffe. At the bar, Sutcliffe begins coughing erratically, so he calls Nia to heal him. 
While Nia is treating him, the police cut the power and start shooting at her. During the shootout, Sutcliffe escapes with Nia and Rhino through the hallway that leads to the garage. When they arrive, Garrett shoots them, hitting Sutcliffe in the chest. Rhino tries to return fire, but Garrett uses his telekinetic powers to knock the weapon out of S hand. Garrett fires several bullets at Reno, but still manages to get up and attack him. Before Rhino can reach him, Garrett uses his telekinetic powers to slow him down. Connor soon arrives to bombard Rhino with electricity. Meanwhile, Sutcliffe tries to pull a gun on Nia and begs her to save him. Rhino manages to grab Connor and throw him onto the table. Connor tries to break free by electrifying Reno, but the voltage wasn't strong enough to stop him. When Rhino strangles Connor, Garrett takes a sharp metal tool and stabs Rhino in the eye. Connor finishes him off by shooting an electric bolt into his head. Nia approaches Sutcliffe, but instead of healing him, she takes his weapon. Garrett uses his telekinetic powers to strangle Sutcliffe and take the gun from Nia. Connor tells Nia that she can leave once she heals his mother. Garrett gives Connor Sutcliffe a gun and tells him to take what he needs. However, Nia shows him the wound on her hand that she sustained from treatment a few days ago. She tells Connor that she could die if she heals his mother. Despite her objections, Connor takes Nia to the hospital anyway. When they arrive, Nia touches Mary to heal her, but Connor soon stops her after seeing her struggling. When Mary wakes up, Connor approaches her and holds her hand as her life fades away. Park and Davis soon find Sutcliffe's body in the garage. Connor arrives at the police station with Nia to turn himself in to the authorities. He tells her that the truck has a full tank and can take her anywhere. Shortly after the tragic robbery, lawmakers proposed a complete ban on the use of powers in Lincoln City due to the murder of four police officers. Park and Davis receive an award for their courage in pursuing criminals in the city. Garrett soon meets with Cumbo and pays him double the money Sutcliffe owes them. Connor stops at his mother's grave and says he won't be able to visit her for a while. Then he turns himself over to the cops and is sent to prison. After such a mess, the government forbids any use of powers in the city. Five years later, Tarek is in need of money to support his little sister Pavina's education. He works selling psych for Garrett and one afternoon Tarek approaches him to show he's been practicing his camouflage powers, hoping it could get him a raise. However, Garrett refuses and a gang member pushes Tarek away. Afterward, Garrett goes to see a presentation by Police Sergeant Kingston, who is showing the locals the latest K-9 units. Lately, people have been complaining about how aggressive Guardians are and how many powers they killed, so this is the friendly solution. The K-9s will jump on a person if they see them armed, however, they'll immediately back away if the person raises their hands. Pavina is also watching the presentation and her eyes glow as she looks into the robot dog. That night, Garrett sends one of his men to drop the bribe money in the usual hiding spot. Tarek follows him, and after the guy is gone, he takes the money for himself. At that moment, Kingston arrives, so Tarek rushes to hide while Kingston gets furious over the missing money. Kingston makes his men search the area, so Tarek uses his powers to hide, but an officer still manages to notice the shape of his face and Tarek has to run away. At the same time, Pavina notices her brother hasn't come home yet and goes looking for him. The officers send AK-9 after Tarek and a desperate chase ensues. After lots of running, Tarek hides inside an abandoned building and when the K-9 gets closer, he uses his powers to pass off as a pile of fabric. Thankfully, the K-9 scanner doesn't notice the difference and the robot soon goes away, allowing Tarek to escape. However, when Tarek is about to get home, the K-9 finds him again. Terrified, Tarek raises his hands and the dog sits, but the cops see this through the robot's cameras and make it inject Tarek with a special poison that kills powers. Tarek wiggles in pain until he dies right as Pavina arrives to see everything. She calls out her brother's name and the dog goes after her, but when she screams, the camera goes black. In the morning at the police station, Kingston checks on the K-9 that was taken down last night, but the IT guy has no idea what happened. His only clue is the last second of the recording, which shows a young girl. Multiple officers are immediately sent out to find her. Meanwhile, it's shown that Connor has gotten out of jail and been living a very boring routine as a janitor at the community center without using his powers. When he goes out to take out the trash, he discovers the lock in the back shed has been broken. He checks inside and finds a terrified Pavina who throws trash at him. Connor swears he won't hurt her and manages to get her inside, where his boss Mina comforts her and gets her to share what happened. Suddenly an officer starts knocking on the door, so Mina goes to distract him while Connor escapes with Pavina through the back door. 
as Mina argues with the cop and closes the door in his face. Connor and Pavina find the road blocked by more cops and take an alternate route only to end up on a security camera. Connor takes Pavina to his apartment and they learn on the news that the cops are saying Tarek died of overdose. Pavina gets furious as she calls out the lie, causing her powers to go crazy and start affecting the television. Connor has to turn it off before something could explode. At that moment, Pavina picks up radio signals and announces the cops are getting closer. Soon the officers enter the building with AK-9, only to find Connor's apartment empty. He and Pavina have been hiding in another apartment, and as soon as the coast is clear, they try to run away. Unfortunately, when they make it outside, two guardians jump out of a drone and land in front of them. Connor immediately uses his electrical powers to shoot a robot down, but he hadn't done this in so long that it leaves him very weak. A voice from the drone tells them they're arrested, causing Pavina to activate her powers again and make all the drone's systems fail so she can run away with Connor. Seeing no other choice, Connor meets with Garrett and asks for the favor he owes him. Connor wants a new ID, cash, and a safe place for a secret friend of his, but Garrett immediately reveals he knows everything about Pavina and what happened with the cops. He explains he has a deal with Kingston, the cops get some money from his sales, and in exchange the gang gets to operate freely. Connor is using this to keep the community safe and pay the donors properly, this way they won't be hunted down. Then Connor agrees to help with all the fake paperwork, but he also points out that Pavina must forget what she saw or the police will never leave them alone. At first Pavina refuses, but Connor explains this is their only chance to survive. Afterward, the group goes to see a woman who has the power to delete people's memories. When Pavina touches her hands, the woman's eyes go black and she starts to work on Pavina's mind. At first, she only deletes the memory of Tarek's death. But soon, she starts moving into all other memories that involve Tarek. Pavina immediately protests because it isn't what they agreed on and Connor tries to stop the process, but the gang holds him down while it's explained that any lingering thought of Tarek could bring the others back, that's why he should be completely erased. A furious Pavina refuses to lose the memories of her beloved brother and starts fighting back against the woman's power to block her. At the same time, a gang member with flame powers tries to burn Connor, but he manages to hit the guy's arm and make him shoot at a pipe on the ceiling instead. Now there's water falling everywhere and Connor uses it as a conductor to knock the whole gang down with his electricity. Afterward, Connor and Pavina go to Mina who agrees to take them away in her car. Her license plate is found by the police drone and they get suspicious considering how she treated the cop earlier, so they send men after her. Soon Mina's car is surrounded by Garrett and his gang, and when they try to take another road, the car gets stuck in a bunch of rocks under a bridge. Garrett uses his telekinetic powers to break the car's windows, then the gang members drag the group out of the car rather violently. Nearby two guardians record everything for the cops, who want this done quickly before someone else sees another case of police brutality. Garrett has orders to shoot Pavina, but Connor puts himself between them and Garrett can't bring himself to shoot him. Time runs out and the Guardians open fire, quickly killing a bunch of gang members while everyone else runs to hide. Garrett receives a bullet that wounds him severely and another shot hits Mina, who just removes the bullet with her hand because her power is thick skin. A gang member tries to save one of her friends only to get killed as well. Then Garrett uses his power to take a mirror from the car, but the Guardians shoot it down too. Desperate, he tells Connor they have no choice but to work together to survive. Mina agrees and tells Connor and Pavina to leave while she steps out to act as a distraction and Garrett brings up some rocks to use as a shield. Both men and Pavina run to Garrett's car and manage to escape while Mina keeps getting shot over and over until she falls. By the time Kingston arrives, Mina is still alive thanks to her thick skin, but she doesn't have long. Kingston offers her medical attention in exchange for information, but Mina responds by spitting on his face before dying. In the evening, the trio makes it to the abandoned orphanage where Garrett grew up. Connor and Pavina hold Garrett down so he can use his powers to remove the bullet from his chest. While having a snack, Connor tells Pavina that they should head to the border, but Pavina is tired of running. The next morning, they're found by Davis, who explains that bringing down Kingston is impossible because he has too much power in the force. Pavina explains she could use her ability to access the recording of all the corruption and put it on national television, she just needs one of the canines. Davis remembers Kingston has his own robot dog at home, so the guys make a plan to reach it. A few hours later, Garrett and Connor show up at Kingston's house pretending to be union reps from the police who want to show their support to the sergeant. 
Kingston's wife Stephanie doesn't know anything about her husband's shady business and gladly lets them in. When Kingston arrives, Pavina watches from the car how he leaves his K-9 in the garage. As soon as he makes it inside he can tell this is a trap, but he can't say anything in front of Stephanie and lets the guys interview him as if they were old friends meanwhile Pavina uses her power to open the garage door and reach the dog. As soon as she touches it, the K-9 activates and alerts the police IT guy who tries to call Kingston to warn him. When his cell phone rings, Garrett subtly uses his powers to nudge a knife on the table, silently warning Kingston not to pick up the call. The technician tries the house phone next, so Stephanie goes to take the call while Connor pretends to go to the bathroom. As soon as they're left alone, Kingston reveals he also has telekinetic powers and tries to throw the knife at Garrett, who immediately blocks it. Both men pushed their powers against each other's, but since Kingston hadn't used them in a while, he lost practice and Garrett easily wins, making the knife drop. In the garage, Connor guides a very scared Pavina so she can concentrate on her powers and get what they need. Then Stephanie comes back and tells Kingston he has an urgent warning about his dog, so Garrett decides to leave while still playing nice. Afterward, Kingston rushes to his garage and discovers his K-9 is gone, so he orders all his men to search for it. The trio leaves with the robot in the car and Pavina confirms she can see all the recordings. Garrett takes them to a safe apartment promising a computer they can use, however they find a bunch of gang members instead because Garrett has betrayed them again. Furious, Connor tries to attack Garrett, who brings him down first with his power. It turns out Garrett wants the information to control Kingston and keep having the leadership of the neighborhood and the psych business. Next, Garrett uses his power to tear off the dog's head and gives it to a gang member, telling him to guard it with his life. When Kingston and his men arrive, Garrett meets them outside and shows them the robot's body, threatening to release the information if his people aren't left alone. However, Kingston responds by stabbing Garrett and cuffing him before sending his men and another K-9 into the building. In the apartment, the group notices that reporters are already arriving in the area and Pavina points out they can still pull off her plan, so Connor convinces the guy to give him the robot head. At that moment, AK-9 unlocks the door and the cops burst in so Connor tries shooting electricity at them, but unfortunately their shields have been modified to absorb it. The officers immediately open fire, so Connor runs away with Pavina while the gang members fight back with a variety of powers, including telekinesis and flames that create a fiery barrier between them and the cops. Sadly, the K-9 quickly puts the fire out and the cops attack again, causing a fierce fight to ensue. Thanks to their powers and excellent teamwork, they manage to bring down the cops one by one. However, when a man with super strength tries to attack Kingston, he stops him with his own power and shoots him in the head. Meanwhile, Connor and Pavina make it to the corridor where they're approached by AK-9. Connor keeps shooting electricity at it, but it isn't enough to stop it, and the robot tackles him to the ground to try to inject him with the poison. A desperate Connor unleashes all his power to hit the dog, causing the power to go out as well. When the emergency lights activate, Connor sees the K-9 is frozen and thinks he's won, however the robot suddenly moves and starts injecting him. As the poison slowly goes into Connor's body, Pavina comes over and concentrates until she can take control of the robot, making it stop. Connor doesn't die, but he's weak by the little poison he's received. At that moment, the IT guy appears in the elevator with another K-9, so Pavina sends the first one out to fight, easily destroying the new arrival in a quick move. Terrified, the cop opens fire, but bullets do nothing and the K-9 tackles him to the floor, cutting his fingers to disarm him. When Connor finally stands up, he discovers a stray bullet has hit Pavina and she's heavily bleeding. While more cops enter the apartment and manage to overpower the gang members, Connor picks up Pavina and takes her outside, but he's too weak to keep going and puts the girl down on the ground. At that moment, they see the reporters nearby and Connor asks them to come closer. The police try to send another K-9 after him, however Garrett uses his telekinesis to fold it into a useless metal ball. Suddenly Davis finally arrives and makes all the cops step back, allowing the reporters to reach the duo. With her last energy, Pavina touches both the robot head and the camera to transmit Kingston's corruption to the whole country. At home, Stephanie is devastated to see the truth about her husband. Kingston comes out of the building and tries to shoot Pavina, however Garrett controls his hand and keeps him at gunpoint, giving Davis time to approach Kingston and arrest him. With their goal achieved, Connor and Pavina pass out. Three months later, Kingston is being investigated and the reporters start to follow the trail of corruption into higher positions. Garrett is in jail and watches the news with satisfaction. 
Connor returns to his janitor job and opens the youth center for all the children in the neighborhood, including a recovered Pavina who thanks him for everything. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this.